Well, I think it's a case of complementing as well as competing. I think when we look at this from a British perspective, it's about the whole of the UK continuing to compete globally and addressing economic issues such as productivity. And therefore, from a national perspective, we need to see where the economic centres of excellence are. London clearly is a dominant part of the UK economy, but the data also shows that there are lots of regional centres or clusters of economic activity. And what we really need is to actually see more effective economic clusters and bigger economic clusters across the whole of the UK as part of the story to a more balanced economy, more balanced in a whole host of different ways. So London, I think, I would argue, is competing as well as cooperating with other cities. In terms of the model, it's interesting. How do you measure the success of this, or indeed, how do you ensure that it does succeed? And there are sort of different conditions in there. There's the sort of economic outcome. There's also the market outcome. The market is a key part, even though we don't always talk about this, because when one looks historically and across other countries, there have sometimes been cities that have gone bust. Detroit being the latest example not too long ago. So the markets want to ensure that if you devolve more power, then you don't allow a spendthrift area to suddenly throw the money away and basically go bust with the central government stepping in. So it's not only about accountability, transparency, but it's about making sure that we have a system that works properly, which leads on to that economic, political, sorry, economic and market aspect to the political side and what works best. And as far as I can determine, the government is focusing on the key area. Mayoral control means that ultimately someone has responsibility. Someone pulls all the levers, brings them together. Someone at the local level, if it's the mayor, can then actually interact with the central government. So the mayoral act side has worked very well in London. Of course, in London, the mayor <coughs> has different responsibilities. And also, at the same time, London, because of historical reasons, had a previously different devolved sense of power and we have the 32 London boroughs, which is still very important. So in London, the mayor has to work very effectively with all the local boroughs, as well as putting the levers on the areas he has direct control over and liaising with central government. But when one looks across the whole of the UK, I think the mayoral approach is maybe the best to go down because it brings direct responsibility and accountability to the fore. Well, I don't think London feels left out. In actual fact, many people across the country would feel that London has had too much of a say for too long. But I think the real and the right approach is to actually say, from a British perspective, we need to make sure that we continue to play to our strengths. When one looks at the global picture, and I think it's always important to look at this from a global perspective, the countries and the cities, the regions that do well would be those that play to their strengths, those that adapt and change and those that understand what are the key sort of drivers of the future. And when one looks at that, it's important for the UK to actually ensure that London's placed to its strength. But at the same time, it's important that we create other centres of excellence across the whole country. So better transport links, better infrastructure spend, these are necessary across the whole country. So coming back to your question, I think the complementarity is an important part of this. London, by its own nature, doesn't want to have everything centralised in London. There are certain clusters of activity that work really well in London. The business, professional, financial services. But that's a regional, that's across the whole country. Too many people work in finance, even though we think of just London. So there's a whole benefit across the whole country. The other clusters in London are tech, med, in terms of the whole med city, and universities as well. And when one looks at it from the UK perspective, there's no reason why we shouldn't start to think of networks differently in the future. If one was thinking of technology, there will be centres of excellence across the whole of the UK. If we think of this whole devolution debate, it's about working together, like the core English cities are all on the same agenda on this. So I think it's about London complementing other cities in the UK, other regions as well. I don't think London feels left out at all. And in fact, London is playing, I would say, a proactive role in terms of the devolution agenda and pushing the devolution debate.